Midweek Politics with Dave Packman on MidweekPolitics.com. Welcome back to Midweek Politics. I'm David Packman. Thanks for joining us. Uh, just a few days ago, and I don't know where, what on earth that is that we're hearing, but apparently Lewis doing some of his band's music production during the show. A couple days ago, I was able to sit down with uh, Chaplain Gordon Klingenschmidt. We talked about why he wants to keep abortion out of military bases. And just for good measure, he decided to throw in some anti-gay stuff, too. It just seems to happen. People just can't help themselves. Let's take a listen. Gordon Klingenschmidt is joining us on the phone. He's a former Navy chaplain, Air Force Academy graduate, and 16-year military veteran. Thanks for calling in, Gordon. God bless you, David, and God bless your listeners in Jesus' name. Can I say that on your show? Hey, that's uh, it's uh, anybody can say whatever they want on this show. That's the great thing about it. Nice. Um, so let me let me talk a little bit about the defense authorization bill. I read your commentary about it, and from what I gathered, the biggest complaint you had with it was uh, the the possibility of military bases performing abortions. Is that an accurate reading of mine? Well, that's not the only thing they shoved into that uh, defense authorization bill. Harry Reid and uh, the Democrats in the Senate were trying to add not only an abortion provision, but, of course, the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell to force homosexuality on our troops against their will. Uh, And I think there was also a last-minute provision, which failed, I think, uh, to open amnesty and give basically college scholarships to uh, children of illegal aliens. That's really... Uh, not a popular item, and I think that's the reason the Republicans united to filibuster that bill in the Senate. My my question about abortion specifically is, is, is your main issue is a moral one here? Is that my understanding correctly? Well, of course, abortion is a moral issue. As a uh, former Navy chaplain, I counseled not only um, young men who had impregnated their girlfriends, but of course I worked with uh, young female sailors. And uh, I even counseled with uh, homosexual sailors. You know, as a chaplain, we have a great opportunity to uh, counsel and to serve our troops of all different faiths. Uh, You know, I worked with Jewish sailors or Muslim sailors. And of course, as an evangelical chaplain, I'm very concerned uh, about just providing for our service members' needs. But morally, and, and I you don't, don't think abortion should be one of those provided services. I mean, am I summarizing incorrectly? Well, I don't think abortion is one of those needs. I, I really think it harms our troops. Of course, any pregnant sailor would be taken off the ship and sent back home stateside. So why would we uh, suddenly start hiring abortion doctors in overseas military hospitals or providing funds for that when, uh, you know, there's already laws against the taxpayer use of abortions, uh, and it's traditionally the military has not been a social experiment base uh, that would be used for funding those kind of things. You know, I spoke with two lawyers before our interview. I did as much research as I could kind of in the short time we had, and they both indicated that regardless of any personal opinion about abortion, there's really no legal justification for, for saying it cannot be performed uh, at a military base. They just said, you know, regardless of opinion, there's, it just doesn't make sense legally. You can't, you can't enforce that. Well, if that were true, then it would already ha- be happening. Uh, the fact is, for the last uh, several decades, abortion has not been performed at military hospital because the law specifically forbids that. And the amendment in the Senate bill was trying to change the law to make it possible and also to provide funding for that. Well, but listen, hold on a second. With Don't Ask, Don't Tell, we know that for years, Don't Ask, Don't Tell has been enforced and it has been law. But now we're finding out, you know what? Uh, It actually is unconstitutional. You can't enforce that. So just saying that it hasn't been done is the reason for why it shouldn't be done. Uh, I don't know that too many people would buy that, would they? I'm saying, no, it's illegal by current law. And that's why they're trying to change the law. Just like Don't Ask, Don't Tell. The Supreme Court ruled back in the 90s that Don't Ask, Don't Tell is a good policy. It is constitutional. And only, uh, you know, obviously last week, uh, liberal judge Virginia Phillips is trying to overrule the Supreme Court by one act of her, you know, single-handed pen. I don't think that's going to hold up. I pray that the Obama administration appeals that. In fact, yesterday there was a call by Congressman Steve King to impeach 
Judge Virginia Phillips because it's really judicial activism. That's not her job. She's misreading the Constitution, and the Supreme Court agrees with me. Well, I don't think there's going to be any impeachment, but we will wait and see. But back to the abortion topic for a second, though. Uh, don't you think that if, uh, if, if there is somebody who is in the military who has determined that they want an abortion and they're not able to get it at the military base, aren't they going to get it anyway, probably in a far less safe way? Well, uh, heaven forbid that anyone would ever try to kill their own child in any manner, whether uh, it's legal or not, it's certainly immoral in the eyes of God. Heck, I'll even adopt the child myself. I was adopted when I was three years old, so I'm certainly glad that my single mother didn't choose to abort me when I was born, or else I wouldn't be talking to you on this show. Killing your child is certainly never the answer, and uh, we want to provide people other opportunities and other alternatives. But do you, So in other words, if, if as a result of a, of a safe abortion not being available, uh, a, a young female soldier uh, ended up dying because of an unsafe abortion that she decided she was going to have, w would you feel bad about that? I mean, what, how, how can you say that we just should not have abortions on military bases, knowing that we are going to hurt people by doing that? Well, there are certainly uh, other alternatives. I mean, uh, if the mother's life is in danger because of the pregnancy, that's certainly an exception that uh, moral Christians would grant. Life of the mother has never been a problem, but health of the mother or her emotional well-being, I mean, if she's going to go and, and try to kill her child, perhaps she needs uh, mental health uh, assistance, or maybe she needs spiritual health assistance. There's other kinds of uh, ways that we can help her other than, uh, heaven forbid, paying for her to uh, kill her own child. I don't think that's the kind of help that she needs, and I don't think it's helpful e even to her physical health. Even You know, there was just a, a doctor who was jailed in Massachusetts this, uh, these past couple months because when he tried to do an abortion on a woman, he had a license to do abortions, he killed the girl and the baby. So, uh, the, you know, abortion itself is not a safe procedure, uh, and it certainly shouldn't be done uh, by uh, the government. Well, I, I think that many people would argue, and, and looking at the facts, abortions uh, done in safe environments are actually very safe procedures, and, and whether or not they should be done in, in a, by the government, I think, it involves a little bit of rhetoric. But let me, let me move on a little. The article that your publicist sent out as background material quoted the American Family Association, and it said, if the defense authorization bill is passed, it would literally turn every U.S. military hospital in the world into an abortion clinic. Is the AFA a group that you are comfortable publicly agreeing with? Uh, I don't agree with everything they say, but the American Family Association, in my experience, has commonly stood for traditional values like uh, marriage and, and pro-life uh, things. They run a lot of petitions, and they have a, a big network of conservative pastors that are by no means extremists, but they certainly do have... Uh, their opinions. So when you when you refer to, to marriage, the AFA is, is a, of, of course, against same-sex marriage. They've uh, filed lawsuits to prevent it from being legalized. They're against even gay-straight alliance groups in schools. They think that that's a danger. Are you against gay marriage yourself? Absolutely. I, I think uh, in God's mind, in fact, even in, in the words of Jesus, in, I want to say, Matthew 19, uh -oh. Jesus ag agreed with uh, the book of Genesis, where God defined marriage between one man and one woman, said, uh, for this reason, a man shall you, uh, leave his parents and unite to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. That means they should procreate or have children. So you must, you must really be upset with the fact that it's becoming more and more clear that, that same-sex marriage is going to be legal uh, in the majority of the U.S. Uh, within years, right? I mean, that must be upsetting to you. It's not inevitable that uh, gay marriage is going to uh, prevail. I think it's inevitable that the will of God will prevail. And even if, hmm. uh, let's, say, let's say all of America voted in favor of homosexual marriage, yeah. it would still be illegal in the eyes of God. Well, so, I, I, you know, that, I never make the God argument, so I, I don't even know where to start responding to those. But what is, what is very clear to me is that I think gay marriage will, will prevail. We'll have to wait and see, though. We can't, we can't see the future yet. Last question in the last minute we have left here. Just out of curiosity, the president of the American Family Association has stated that 
obscene content on TV and in movies is the result of Jewish control of the media. I, being Jewish myself, I get emails like this all the time, so I'm curious whether you would agree with that. No, I, I don't think there's any religious angle to it. Of course, there's Orthodox Jews who would oppose that kind of obscenity. Uh, there's liberal Jews who, just like there are Christians, there's liberal Christians who would, you know, favor uh, allowing that kind of things. But uh, I think the the Christians or the Jews who are faithful to the Bible, the way that Moses taught, the way that Abraham right. taught, the way that the prophets taught, of course, would oppose any kind of uh, lewdness. We don't want to indoctrinate or, or violate our children with that kind of filth on television, especially during daylight hours, heaven forbid. Uh, but, uh, you know, I support Tim Wildman with American Family Association, and uh, we have many petitions going on our website uh, to oppose, for example, don't ask, don't tell, repeal, and keep homosexuality out of the military. So if people yeah. would sign those petitions, they can visit our website at PrayInJesusName.org. Right. Well, we've been speaking with uh, former Navy chaplain Gordon Klingenschmidt. I'll tell you, I, I think you're just flat wrong on a lot of these, and I think the AFA is incredibly extreme, and I, I would disassociate from them as soon as possible, but I think you're probably on the other side of that issue. I do appreciate getting the chance to talk to you, though. Yeah, I welcome your call anytime. God bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you. Well, good to talk to Gordon Klingenschmidt. Inter interesting interview for sure. Midweek Politics is made possible by listeners like you and by Greenfield Savings Bank, building a strong community one account at a time with neighborhood offices in Greenfield, Amherst, Conway, Shelburne Falls, South Deerfield, and Turner's Falls, and online at greenfieldsavings.com. By the Daily Hampshire Gazette and gazettenet.com, connecting our communities with local news and information. By DIF Design, specializing in custom business websites at difdesign.com. Find out more about underwriting midweek politics at midweekpolitics.com.